All right, I'm out here pulling soil samples on one of my new fields today. This one's 13 acres. I already got the raft back around the woods. I already got that part done. Just got this little spot left to do here. I wanted to be doing this last weekend, but I had a damn Saturday field trip for one of my classes, which was it was cool. It was a cool field trip. So we went down to the Bear Run Strip Mine down by Duggar, Indiana, which is owned by Peabody Coal, and got to see some really, really, really big Tonka toys. Had a couple Bucyrus Siri. Uh, walking drag lines with 118 yard buckets on them so you know that's cool but still it was a Saturday field trip when I could have been up here running combine and doing this but I got this field because the landlord was let's just say less than satisfied with the previous tenant who I used to be friends with but Due to some crap that went down, we won't get into. We are no longer really on good speaking terms. So, and it ain't got nothing to do with this field either. Before anybody says anything about that. But my grandma is friends with this guy, and she was telling him that I farmed, and he told her to tell me to come over and talk to him. So I did. And here we are, I got 13 acres. This is, to date, my biggest field. And this is the first field I got. I got this before I got the other 11 acres down the road. So this was this is actually the first field I ever got that was over, or that was up in the double digits. So that's nice. The only downside is I'm curious to see what these soil tests say because previous guy hadn't really fertilized it in the last four four years he's been working it so but he's also had beans on it for the last I think I think Mark said last three years so I mean if you're gonna do anything and not put fertilizer on beans are a little easier on the ground than corn is but still not an ideal situation I'm going to be putting corn on it next year, so. And that, like the last guy, whew, if you could have met him, he's, he's just a character, and he's not a really good farmer to begin with, and as you can see, he's terrible at setting up a combine. I'm glad I got this. I, ideally, on bean ground, I wouldn't use that soil saver because it buries too much residue, and I'd rather leave some on top, but. In this field, I'm gonna have to use that soil saver because the Oliver, that three-point plow I got with his plug on all these plug piles. I don't even think he was running the spreader. I think he was just dropping the crap on the, on the ground. But, I guess talk a little bit about what I'm doing here. Yeah, that's bad core. So this is what's called a soil probe. I actually made it because I didn't like any of them I could buy mainly because all the ones you buy are built out of a lot thinner tubing and if you get a hard if you get a situation like some of the spots you see me do here where you gotta drive them in the ground with a hammer you beat the living crap out of them so I built this out of schedule 80 seamless pipe and I could probably beat on it with a nine pound sledgehammer and not cave it in so and when you pull soil samples the depth you sample is really depending on what you're doing if you're no-tilling, you get what's called nutrient stratification, which means the majority of the nutrients are up in about the top four to five inches of the soil. So, when you're no-tilling and you're pulling soil samples, you only have to, have to pull a core about four inches deep. If you're in a tillage situation like I am, you pull a core as deep as you are tilling up to about eight inches after eight inches it really doesn't matter anymore and the reason for that is when you're tilling you're mixing the nutrients into the soil and you don't get the stratification layer 
like you do in a no-till situation. Oop, there's the tile, one tile hole he was talking about. There's supposedly two of these out here I gotta get fixed. But I'll have to look for that other one here before I leave. But um So yeah. Four inches for no till up to eight inches or whatever the depth of your tillage is and then if you are um, soil sampling for soil pH and lime application you always sample to eight inches no matter whether you're no-till or conventional so and then ideally you want your subsample to represent no more than 20 acres this field's only 13 so I'm only going to pull one sample if you have the equipment to variable rate apply nutrients across the field with a uh, nutrient prescription plan then you sample on a grid that can vary anywhere from about one or that can vary anywhere from an acre to however big a grid you want or you can sample by soil type in the field if if you have a bunch of different soil types in the field now I have no way to variable rate apply fertilizer so I am just gonna pull one sample out of this field and when you get a, when you're pulling a sample you want at least 15 individual cores in one subsample here I quit counting because I knew I was gonna have more than 15 I come up to like 20 so That is how you pull a sample, and I'll run up here and show you how to mix it. That is just a terrible job of setting up a combine. I'd be embarrassed. Thing. And then this is a little bit redneck, but I just use a mortar mixer. Or not a mortar mixer, a uh, drywall mud mixer. Don't tell me my battery's dead. We're good. And you mix that up good and try to bust them chunks up as good as you can. This this ground's a little wet. But I wanted to get it done and get these things sent out. So you get that mixed up good. And then the lab I sent them to actually has these sample bags that they send you for free. Uh, ba, ba, ba. and then you got to give it a sample ID I'm gonna call this you got four digits I usually go the landowners initials and then the number of acres so And then out of all this, they only use about a quarter of a tablespoon to run the actual sample. But they need enough soil to get a decent composite sample of the field. And I, like I say, ideally you wouldn't do it when it's, this, when it's this tacky out, but this is possibly the last decent chance I have. So we're going to be combining this afternoon when Dad gets home. And if we get any more decent weather, I am going to be finishing up chisel plowing, and I really don't want to have to be screwing around with pulling soil samples. So 
just get it done while I got decent weather. And in all reality, this isn't, I've definitely sampled when it was wetter. So they need at least this much soil, which is part of the reason you want so many subsamples, or put so many cores in a subsample, is so you got enough for them. And the amount of soil they actually use depends on also what tests you're getting run, but I'm just getting a, uh, a PK CE, or yeah, uh, nitri or phosphorus, potassium, cation exchange capacity, and uh, soil pH. Because we don't really have, that's actually a little over, but that's chunky so there's air in there, but what was I going to say? Oh yeah, in our area we don't really have any NPK, uh, oxygen, carbon, what are the other ones? Oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, NPK are all macronutrients that you normally sample for. And then we got what's called micronutrients, but we don't have any micronutrients issues around here. Uh, so. Sorry I got cut short there. My landlord out there just came over and was talking to me, so... I shut the camera off, but so that's the very basics of how soil sampling is done. It's uh, with the new precision farming methods we got available to us. Well, that a lot bigger farmers than I have available to them. Uh, soil sampling has gotten a lot more sciencey in about the last five, six years. Especially with new planter technology and variable rate fertilizer application and multiple hybrid seed or multiple hybrid planters and multiple product fertilizer spreaders and yeah, there's we got some equipment. This is mind-boggling what it'll do these days. And people bitch that farmers aren't stewards of the land. What people fail to realize is that the land is our bread and butter and if we don't take care of it we're kind of screwing ourselves so now i'm saying that there are farmers that are just terrible farmers like the previous guy that did that field but there's more good ones than bad ones but when i uh get the soil test report back i'll make a video about how you read those and i'll do talk a little bit more about nutrients